incredibly exciting things are happening in space right now. Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin has announced a gigantic new rocket that will be capable of carrying people to the moon. Elon Musk has announced a tourist flight beyond the moon, and Robert Bigelow is planning an orbital hotel, both to launch within three years. Bezos, Musk, Allen, Teal, and Bigelow are betting that thousands and then millions of people will migrate from the Earth in the coming decades. But for these ambitions to be real, we will need fueling stations in orbit, with propellant coming from the asteroids and the moon. We will need a transcontinental railroad to the solar system. Hi, I'm Joel Sircell, founder and chief engineer of Transastra Corporation. Transastra has several innovations and inventions that will enable, benefit, or accelerate the development of the Translunar Railroad and build the orbital refueling stations we need. Somewhat like the public-private partnerships that allowed for the construction of the Transcontinental Railroad in the 19th century, Transastra's business plan focuses on public-private partnership as a win-win for government and private investors. We will build a fully reusable cislunar transportation network supplied not from the ground, but from space resources. There exist thousands of volatile rich near-Earth asteroids that are more accessible by rocket from the surface of the Earth than is the surface of the Moon. Also, we now know that the permanently dark regions on the bottom of craters near the lunar poles are filled with water and other frozen volatile compounds. The industrial revolution of space will be driven by propellant mined from asteroids and lunar polar craters. Our NASA-funded cost analysis shows that we can save NASA over $50 billion over a period of about 10 years for human exploration in cislunar space. This savings will more than pay for the development of the railroad, propellant depots, and mining systems. We have a three-phase plan. We're currently in phase one, performing laboratory demonstrations and technology development, funded mostly by NASA, with some funding by angel investors to fill in gaps between NASA grants and contracts. Flight demonstrations of our technology will begin in phase two, again, funded by a mix of NASA and private investors, likely shifting more to formal public-private partnerships. Finally, during phase three, we will set up and run resource extraction and transportation services in cislunar space. NASA will be our first paying customer, and we will provide propellant and transportation services to NASA astronauts on missions of human exploration. Innovations we're working on now in phase one focus on the mining technology for extracting propellant from asteroids and the lunar surface deep space propulsion systems that can use that propellant to transport goods and people in space, flight system architectures of vehicles and outposts, business model development, and technology for telescopes. To extract resources such as water, carbon dioxide, and methane to make rocket propellant from captured asteroids, our team at Transastra has developed a process we call optical mining. We've demonstrated optical mining in dozens of experiments in collaboration with the Colorado School of Mines and in a full-scale demonstration at the White Sands Solar Furnace Facility in New Mexico. The next step in optical mining development is a laboratory device we call the Optical Mining Test Bed, or OMTB for short. The OMTB will be based on the world's largest light bulb and it will make it possible for us to rapidly mature optical mining technology in the laboratory in a shirt sleeve environment. After the OMTB, we will flight demonstrate optical mining at the International Space Station. To do this, we will build and fly the Optical Mining Experiment Module, or OMEM. This flight experiment will cost about $5 million and will entail propellant extraction from a real meteorite in space, and as such will represent the world's first demonstration of optical mining. Transastra has invented the omnivore thruster, which uses virtually any fluid as propellant and only concentrated solar power as its energy source. The omnivore thruster can be developed and demonstrated here on Earth using the optical mining test bed as a power source. Recently, Transastra has won an award from NASA to build and fly a revolutionary new type of telescope for finding and prospecting asteroids without having to travel to them. The Thea mission will be Transastra's first spaceflight mission and will launch in a little over two years. 
Sophia will enable an asteroid prospecting mission we call Sutter Survey, named for Sutter's Mill, where they discovered gold and started the gold rush in California. After that, Sutter Extreme will be capable of finding and prospecting thousands of near-Earth asteroids every year. Transastra also has ongoing work on how to make radiation shields out of asteroid regolith and has proposed an exciting experiment module for the International Space Station that will demonstrate this technology in space. Asteroid Provided In Situ Systems, or APIS, is a new flight system architecture that uses many known technologies applied in elegant new ways to exploit the microgravity, the vacuum, the background cold sink, and the abundant solar energy in space. APIS minimizes the use of robotics, massive ground-launched equipment, and costly electric power systems. The key component technologies for APIS include thin film precision inflatable solar reflectors, lightweight capture bags for capturing and containing small asteroids, thin film inflatable sunshades to provide passive cold sinks for trapping evolved water vapor, and solar thermal rocket technology using water as propellant. APIS includes the Honeybee mining vehicles and missions, and the Worker Bee Orbit Transfer Vehicle, or Space Tug. APIS will support NASA human exploration missions in cislunar space, the lunar surface, near-Earth asteroids, and the planet Mars, and can save up to $50 billion as compared to current techniques. At TransAstra, we tend to agree with Alan Kay, the inventor of the PC, who said, the best way to predict the future is to invent it. The future is not laid out on the track. It is something that we can decide. And to the extent that we do not violate any known laws of the universe, we can probably make it work the way we want to.